in black. Underway from Fertitta Center. Emmanuel Sharp, Jamal Shedd, LJ Cryer, Jawan Roberts, and Javier Francis, the starting five, and Cryer off the back iron with his first three. A whistle before the second three, and a foul underneath. Uh, I didn't see who they called the foul on. Was that on the shot? I think a foul maybe on the rebound as we take another look. You think LJ Cryer feels comfortable in the new system? Uh, five seconds into the first game, and he's already got two jacked up from the three-point line. Five for 11 behind the three-point line in the exhibition game, LJ Cryer. Jamal Shedd at the logo. Cryer gets it off just in time. And a rebound from Din Black. Away from Fertitta Center. Emmanuel Sharp, Jamal Shedd, LJ Cryer, Jawan Roberts, and Javier Francis, the starting five, and Cryer off the back iron with his first three. A whistle before the second three, and a foul underneath. Uh, I didn't see who they called the foul on. Was that on the shot? a foul maybe on the rebound as we take another look. You think LJ Cryer feels comfortable in the new system? Uh, five seconds into the first game and he's already got two jacked up from the three-point line. Five for 11 behind the three-point line in the exhibition game, LJ Cryer. Jamal Shedd at the logo. Cryer gets it off just in time. And a rebound from Big A.D. Dichu, the junior from Senegal. Here is the starting lineup. Dichu, LaCour, Gallion, and Wilson joining Nika Metsarishvili. Gallion, Metsarishvili with three to shoot. And a foul on Sharp as he tried to box out underneath the basket. Yeah, nice job, Emmanuel Sharp, diving in, but just got too much body. Interesting, the first possession, ULM ran their set and never got the ball past the free throw line. Total frustration. That's what this Houston defense will do to you. They just make you so uncomfortable getting into your sets. Inbounds play for the Warhawks. Tyreek LaCour, the only returning starter from last year's team. Senior from New Orleans. Loose ball picked up by Francis. Jawan Roberts took a shot to the mouth. Shed runs the offense for Houston. Ali oop, Javier Francis. Yeah, the first on the ball screen, Jamal Shed did not read the defense very well at all. That time he read it perfectly. Here's that matchup we talked about in the open. Nika and Juwan Roberts out on the floor guarding him. Turnover ULM. It was Sabian Gallian lost it in the backcourt. Watch the defense. You see Jamal Shetty he comes off of that screen and he hesitates. And he's hesitating because he's forcing ADG to, to make a decision. Either guard me or stay back. That hesitation draws the defense to him. Very nice job running the offense by Jamal Shedd. It was touched by Nika Metsarishvili. It's a Houston inbounds underneath the basket. Cougars 33 wins last season. Fourth straight Sweet 16. Only Gonzaga has accomplished four straight Sweet 16s in all of college basketball. One second left on the shot clock. Shed gets it off. And Nika rebounds. Nearly a backcourt sure violation. Was. You gotta have both feet across the line when you catch that ball. You cannot be stepping across the line. Good help side defense from Jamal Shed. Emmanuel Sharp lost it. A cherry picking down court. 
Savion Gallion, the senior from Washington, D.C. Seven points last year. Here's Savion Gallion. Short comes off a screen. And he draws a foul. Big AD Diju. 6'11 from Dakar, Senegal. Boy, and he is big and strong, and they come off the bench with more players that look just like him. This is really pretty good defense till the very end. You couldn't see ADGG's left arm, but he came down on top of Emmanuel Sharp, but he played it almost perfectly. You rotate over, even if you're inside the restricted arc, leave your feet, jump straight up, and you can contest the shots. We're gonna talk a lot this year about the new rule change on block charges and secondary defenders and rotating over it. I don't anticipate we're going to see very many people trying to draw a charge rotating over from the weak side. But what we're going to see a lot of is people contesting sporting, leaving their feet and going straight up contesting guys as they attack the rim. Sharp makes one of two. LaCour runs the offense here. Second year at ULM. Preseason second team all sunbelt. Cryer gets his hand in the passing lane to steal for Francis. Sharp lobbing it. That was actually last time down. That was a defensive breakdown by U of H. They left the player unguarded. LJ Cryer for Kelvin Sampson on the weak side did a masterful job of recognizing the breakdown and diving down to help on the post player. Devin Hancock into the game. Nika takes a three, left it short. Offensive rebound. Galleon attacks and finishes off the window after taking contact from Francis. Boy, that was a strong finish by Savion Galleon. 4-3, UL Monroe. Two changes coming for Houston. Dunn and JoJo Tugler set for their Houston debuts. Malik Wilson as well. Turnaround finish there, Jawan Roberts. Uh, Xavier Francis and ADG Drew are really going after each other inside. Uh, Gallion. Keith Richard was very honest and he said, I, I really don't know what we have. He's got two guys, ADG Drew and Nika, both only have played for three weeks. He said, I don't know what we're going to look like. Uh, starting this game, they look really good. Another steal for Houston. It's Cryer in the paint. Back for Jamal Shedd. Shedd hits the three. Let me tell you why that's a big bucket. That's the third time that the on the ball screen, the defender has gone underneath the screen. They are daring Jamal Shedd to stop and knock down that shot. That'd be a good replay. Damian Dunn, the transfer from Temple in the game, getting his first action. So far, ULM has three turnovers in their first seven possessions. The Cougars with two steals. Malik Wilson also in on the perimeter. And JoJo Tugler wearing 25. And Wilson with the closeout rejection. And he's stepped out of bounds. Hey, if, you, if you're on social media, Google Malik Wilson vertical jump. This kid is ridiculously athletic. I mean, a legitimate 42, 44 inch vertical jump. And you saw a little bit of that there. ULM is in a 2 3 zone coming out of this timeout. He spent time at Texas Tech before transferring. Dunn misses the three. Flying for the rebound is LaCour. As you have a few debuts. Dunn, Wilson, and JoJo Tugler. Tugler commits the foul. We were very impressed with JoJo Tugler in the exhibition last weekend against UNC Pembroke. Yeah, Malik Wilson put him in a really bad position. Just got beat really bad off the dribble. Gave up his shoulders. Instead of keeping your shoulders, your shoulders more perpendicular to the guy with the ball. Well, that time Malik Wilson just turned and opened up to the, to the lane. And, uh, bad things are going to happen if you can't stay in front of these guys. 
LaCour misses the first. High risk, high reward player, according to Coach Richard, in that he's a point guard. He's the one guy on the team that can kind of wiggle out of situations, but he will be turnover prone. Well, Coach Richard said, look, it's important that LaCour plays well while we try to figure out what our identity is, what our what, what we go to, what works for us. He said, all I know is that while we're trying to figure that out, well, Tariq really needs to play well. Four zone from the Warhawks. Wilson attacking. Cryer from deep. Wilson with the board. Tugler for Damian Dunn. Uh, Damian Dunn, I remember watching him last year for Temple, and boy, I'm telling you, this young man can play basketball. The depth on the perimeter for Houston this year after losing two of their best players in Marcus Sasson, come on, Mark, it's remarkable the depth on this team. Here's Dunn. Back to Wilson. Wilson, a redshirt season last year. Dunn from deep. team is the best he's seen in his tenure since returning to college from the NBA. So there were some games that Houston has lost that Kelvin felt like Houston was the better team. Not that night. Baylor was by far the best team in the country. LJ Cryer, a freshman on that team. A thrown out to Gallion. Seven to shoot for the Warhawks. Defended by Wilson. They stepped out of bounds. Uh, well, I was critical of Malik Wilson not staying in front of his man. That time he did an excellent job. That's now five turnovers for the Warhawks. He's moving his feet, getting down there. Nice rotation by JoJo Tugler. Warhawks staying in a 2-3 zone. Arsenal. It's a four-guard lineup. That's a good call. JoJo Tugler shoving off. Terrence Arsenal is catching the ball at the high post. When he catches it, he's got to turn and face the basket. You've got to make the back line of the 2-3 zone react to you. If you just catch it and kick it right back out and never turn, the defense doesn't have to react. And Tugler goes to the bench. Two fouls on JoJo Tugler. Houston on 11-1 run. Wilson also to the bench. It's Shed, Arsenal, Cryer, Francis, and uh, another four guard lineup. Yeah, this is emphasizing the versatil versatility of Terrence Arsenal, who's playing power forward right now. DJ. Terrence doing a great job running the post inside. Nika Cohen for the ball. Arsenal doing a great job. Another shot clock violation. ULM really struggling to get into its offense. Uh, Nika's down there and he's working hard. That's now six turnovers, but he's not calling for the ball. He's just moving and shoving and turning. And uh, Terrence Arsenal with the quick feed. That was terrific post defense by the sophomore from Beaumont. The Warhawks out of the 2-3 zone, back into man-to-man. Dunn attacking. Damian Dunn in the paint. Plus the foul. And it's not just build a team, it's build a program. The fact that each year, it seems like every year, the team loses three, four starters. Hey, you're talking about a team that lost two NBA first-round picks. Marcus Sasser and Jarris Walker. And then Tremont Mark to the portal. And then suddenly you starting the season and you're the number six, number seven team in the country. Absolutely remarkable. And right now they're on a 14 to one run in the last four minutes. Damian Dunn with nine of those 14 points. Cougars picked second in the Big 12 poll. Another turnover in and out of the hands of Bolden. And a travel there from Jamal Shedd. Damian Dunn's coming off of a foot injury, and boy, I'm looking at him. He doesn't seem winded. He's not out of breath. He, he looks like he's just as fresh as can be. Last touched by ULM off the foot. 
Uh, Makai Willis, the junior transfer from Fairfield University, and as the coaching staff talks things over. Makai Willis, 6'9", that's your point guard, Jamal Shedd, getting around the front and forcing that turnover on the post-injury pass. Arsenault now with Shedd. Dunn on the low block. Turnaround from Dunn. Oh, my goodness. Holy cow, we've seen a three, we've seen a dribble drive, and now a mid-range. That's 11 straight points for Damian Dunn. Brings a ton of experience from Temple, 72 career games, 15 points per game each of the last two seasons at Temple. Foul called on Javier Francis. That's yeah, interesting. Keith Richard talking about, I don't know who we are. That's kind of how you feel about Damian Dunn. We, we've heard so much and we know how he fit into Temple system, but we have no idea what he was going to look like in Houston system. And golly, you know, it's a small sample size, but I'm just going to go ahead and say really good is how he's going to look in this system. Good contest on the air ball. Shed hustling for the loose ball. And Jamal Shed called for a foul as he tried to save that. Yeah, left arm, left arm. That's a good call. That's Blanca Burns making that call. That Blanca before the game. And first time I've met Blanca, and I don't remember a female official calling a University of Houston game before. That was a good call. Marcus Pettigrew is the crew chief. Brooke Wells, the other referee alongside Blanca Burns. Right now, 50% of ULM's possessions are resulting in a turnover. 14 possessions, 7 turnovers. Wilson gets help from Francis. Good pursuit for Wilson. That's his second block of this first half. You know, it's a spectacular block, but he's getting consistently beat off the dribble. He's getting that block from behind. And uh, as much as people love a nice block shot, I think Kevin Simpson would rather him just demonstrate the ability to stay in front of his man. Third college from Malik Wilson, Louisiana, and Texas Tech before Houston. Dunn is on fire. Boy, is he ever. Holy cow, Damian Dunn now with 14 straight points for the Cougars. Had a career high 38 against Vanderbilt last year. Straight away three off the back iron. Loose ball picked up by Jalen Bolden, sophomore from Zachary, Louisiana. Now, Bolden led Zachary High School to its first state title since 1944, a couple years ago. Ended up with back-to-back -back state titles in Zachary High School. OJ Cryer is going to return. Dunn goes to the bench. It's Cryer, Arsenal, Sharp, Malik Wilson. And J.B. Francis, again, a four-guard setup. We're seeing a lot of this. We saw a lot of it in the scrimmages or the exhibition game against UNC Pembroke. Be interesting to see if Terrence Arsenault physically can continue to defend a power forward in the Big 12 Conference. Right now, out on the floor. Well, that's playing to Arsenault's street. Nice denial from Wilson. He saves it. Sharp hustling to find Cryer. Emmanuel Sharp. Malik Wilson. Cryer for Sharp. Good rebound, Francis. He goes straight back to the basket. He'll go to the line. All right, last year, J.D. or Francis gets that offensive rebound, and 10 times out of 10, he's kicking it back out. This time, he grabs the rebound. Watch him look, then take a power dribble. One dribble, and he's at the rim. Boy, that is good, aggressive offensive rebounding by J.D. or Francis. Huge potential for Javier Francis. Grew up in New Orleans. Went to Montverde Academy.
Okay, is it too soon in the season for me to start talking about free throws? Never too soon, really. Right. Javier Francis needs to come up on his toes when he shoots. He's got this long athletic body, and yet he doesn't extend when he shoots his free throws. His release looks really, really good this year. He just needs to extend up. Got the roll. A ULM, three for 12 from the field. One assist and eight turnovers for Louisiana Monroe. Contested three. Tyreek LaCour, the senior, second year, uh, preseason on conference pick, second team in the Sun Belt. First made three for the Warhawks after missing their first four. Wilson bounce pass inside to Francis. Draws a double team out to Sharp, now Malik Wilson. Three to shoot for Wilson. Yeah, that's a cool story. So when Bobby Knight first joined the Big 12 at Texas Tech, I was doing Studio 66. It was a Big 12 tournament. Tech had a big win. We had him up in the studio, and so he's sitting down, sitting next to him. And, you know, I'm puckered, nervous, nervous as can be interviewing Bob Knight. And said it, and asked him a question, and for some reason, I put my hand down on his leg and squeezed it like we were buddies. <laughs> Bob Knight shot a look at me like, I'm about to break your arm <laughs> off. <laughs> I looked at him and I kind of whimpered like, uh, sorry, coach. <laughs> I thought, oh my gosh, live on the air in Studio 66, I'm about to get decked by Bob Knight. How did the interview go? Uh, I don't remember. <laughs> No, he was very gracious and, and uh, enjoyed it very much. And whenever he was in the mood to talk basketball, which with reporters and media wasn't very often, but when he was, oh my gosh, it was just fascinating listening to him talk and uh, his points of emphasis. And if you got a chance to watch one of his practices, man, it, it was like a tutorial. There was no other noise in the gym other than his voice. No assistance, not Pat, not Chris Beard, the coach at Ole Miss. It was Bob Knight and Bob Knight only. Roberts, Wilson, Sharp. Ramon Walker Jr. in the game, and there's a three from Emmanuel Sharp. Boy, that shot was deep on the floor by Emmanuel Sharp. Tough to know what to do against this Houston team. Man to man, you have a hard time matching up. You go zone, and boy, so many guys can jump up and knock down shots. Re rebounded by Ramon Walker Jr. And it's out. Houston ball. Another point on Bob Knight from Coach Sampson and his media availability this week. He said probably the three coaches had the biggest impact on his generation Dean Smith, Bobby Knight, and John Thompson. Yeah, oh, interesting. And now down for more. Let's go back to Abby Christofferson. Fire him out. And three from Sean plus the foul. Thank you, Abby. If you're Devin Hancock, you, you don't know what to do. Last time down, Emmanuel Sharp pulled up from about 25 feet. So now he's at 27. You think, well, I, I got to go out there on him. I got to contest this. And you go out and you hit his arm, and he still knocks down the three. It says a lot that Sharp is starting in this very, very talented group of guards. And returning from last year's team, alongside Terrence Arsenault, Ramon Walker Jr., and the returning point guard in Jamal Shett. Reach and foul there, Malik Wilson. 
interesting now, the first time we've seen it. Number eight, first time since 57-58, a Houston player has worn a player, has worn a number between six and nine. It's a new rule change. You can have any number as a legal number this year from zero to 99. And you can have zero or you can have a double zero. The reason for that, why the rule was for so long, is officials have got to go over and signal in loud arenas where the table can't hear you. And if you have a foul, you have 35 on the floor and eight. Well, when you go over and you hold up two hands, the, the, the scores table doesn't know whether you're saying it was a foul on 35 or eight. And so all the numbers were limited as five was the highest digit. New rule this year. Now uh, we'll talk with the referees how they'll do it. I think they'll just point at him and say that guy. Well, you know, back in the foul. day, back in the day, the home team wore even numbers and the visiting team wore odd numbers. So that you never had to say 44 white. You just said 44 or 45, and then they would know who the foul was on. Turnover ULM. And that was one of the concerns for Keith Richard. Turnovers for Nika Metzarishvila. I think at full strength, this ULM team, he might run the offense has in a high post roll at stretch four, but against Houston day one of the season, yeah. Not so easy. Well, Coach Richard was exactly right. They're, they're playing like they don't know what their identity is. And right now, Houston not only dominating defensively, but on the offensive glass, they've missed 10 shots and they have five offensive rebounds. A 50% offensive rebounding efficiency is a really high number. Dunn turns it over. He had 14 consecutive points for Houston earlier in this half. In five minutes. Good defense here from Dunn. Guarding Gallion. Turnover again. Cryer saves it to yeah. Sharp. Credit that turnover to Emmanuel Sharp doing a great job of playing post defense. Dunn all alone in the corner. And he'll get back to the free throw line. Staff's ability to develop players. Speaking of developing players, you see what Marcus Sasser's done the last two weeks? back-to-back -back games with 20 plus points they played the Warriors LJ Cryer transfer after being three years at Baylor and an all Big 12 uh, performer that's why you see a Damian Dunn who was all conference in the American Athletic Conference transferring over it's because of the staff's ability to develop players speaking of developing players you see what Marcus Sasser's done the last two weeks back-to-back -back games with 20 plus points they played the Warriors tonight, I haven't seen a updated box score, but incredible coming off the bench. They wanted to ease him into his rookie season. Yeah, I, I, you know, Monty Williams is going to change that definition of what easing into the into the system is. The post players, Reed, are denying every entry pass. That's another steal there for Javier Francis. Yeah, fronting the post players, and uh, Louisiana Monroe simply cannot get the ball to their big guys. LJ Cryer for Ramon Walker Jr. Walker Jr. cleared space, left it short. Rebounded by Juwan Roberts, thrown in the backcourt. It's the right idea. One of the best things you can do in an offensive rebound, if you're not under the basket and you don't have balance, Tip it out for an offensive for an offensive rebound out to a spot up three. We see Calvin Sampson growth, the key word for this season in his eyes. He really won't know how good this team is till about Christmas time. There's a nice alley oop and a bucket there for ULM. Backdoor cut there for Jacob Wilson, the sophomore for Baton Rouge. First easy basket for the Warhawks in this game. Sampson and his staff, they want to see growth game by game. And Kelvin Sampson has said he doesn't find the losses as much as he previously did as, as a younger coach. He just wants to see the growth. And by the time they hit January, they know what kind of team they have. Juwan Roberts now fronting the post. Contested three, rebounded by Ramon Walker Jr. Sharp gets to the basket, plus the foul. Points off the bench for Damian Dunn. This deep guard group, six deep. You know, it's interesting. 
Damian Dunn, you, you look at him, and he just carries himself like a full-grown man. He, you know, like a seasoned veteran, experienced. He's been through the battles. And then also, he's here for a reason, and he's here to get better. And he's hoping for a Quentin Grimes type of impact to his game. Another four-guard lineup joining Jawan Roberts. We've seen a lot of this tonight. Boy, the post-up player catches the ball. He's out beyond the three-point line. Look at that. Five to shoot. A tipped in by himself. That was impressive there. Devin Hancock got that one. Yeah, he missed it, got his own rebound. Went to Horn High School in Dallas. 31 games, three starts last season for Devin Hancock. Cryer with the pull-up. Walker rebounds. Cryer to the rim. I will go to the line. Well, Jake Cryer's got terrific footwork out on the perimeter. He did a jab step, and I'm telling you, 75% of the players that did this move right here would be called for traveling. Look how that, oh, he did travel. He got away with it. I'll, I'll take all of that back, but he, he jabs and he bounces off of that jab foot. So it's not just a stick it in the ground. It's almost like it's on rubber the way he bounces back. But, uh, that time, that was a good replay. He clearly picked up his pivot foot. A point of emphasis this year for the officials. Keith Richard, 14th year at his alma mater, ULM. He's an assistant at LSU, head coach at Louisiana Tech. I said that uh, Richard played OU when he was a coach at Louisiana Monroe. That's not right. It's when he was at Louisiana Tech. Absolutely. Also an assistant at Marshall. Began his career as a grad assistant at his alma mater. 38 years in college basketball for Keith Richard, the head coach of ULM, and that's a needless turnover. Catchable ball. Yeah, you, you know, it, 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 <laughs> Coach Richard saying, throw it up where he can catch it. That's 6'9 being guarded by 6'2", 6'1", L.J. Cryer. And, you know, the, the advantage coming into this game was the size of the Warhawks. I, I don't remember a single time they've been able to complete a post-entry pass. Cryer bounce passes for Juwan Roberts. Roberts missed it. Arsenault grabs the offensive board. Back for L.J. Cryer. Ramon Walker Jr. Five to shoot. Back for Cryer. Good defensive possession for the Warhawks. Yeah, you immediately looked over to the Houston bench and Kelvin Sampson applauding. That, that was terrific offensive rebounding. That was at least every time the ball came off the rim, there were two white shirts at least fighting over the ball. Arsenal poked it away. Turnover ULM. That is now 13 turnovers in the first half for Louisiana Monroe. leads ULM with four points on four shots. Here's Roberts facing up. Damian Dunn posting up. Mid-range from Dunn. Draws the contact. Yeah, he is so good. He creates separation. He lowers his right shoulder, steps back, gets the defensive player off balance, and then just a simple head fake. And boy, everybody's up off the ground, and he's jumping into you and then standing at the free throw line. Really, really impressed with Damian Dunn tonight. Fifth year senior. I graduated from Temple in the spring, communications and media studies. Over 80% from the line the last two years. These Houston Cougars only lost one conference home game last year, and that was to Damian Dunn's led the Temple team. Francis comes on to replace Juwan Roberts for Houston. Tyreek LaCour. 
returning it. Scorer from last year, 14 points. For Tyreek LaCour for ULF. Jacob Wilson for Makai Willis. And the post defense has been exceptional. Arsino grabs the rebound. Timeout to handling the ball with pressure. And some big guys don't do always do a good job of reverse pivoting and looking at the floor. And there's this panic factor. And I would argue with a, a, a small guy that's down lower with quicker hands, may be more difficult to pass out of than a tall guy with long arms. First half comes to a close. Second of Sweet 16. And forget about the fact they lost a heartbreaker in the NCAA tournament to Michigan on a half-court heave, a, a three-pointer at the buzzer, where it would have been five consecutive Sweet 16s. This is a program that Kelvin Sampson and his staff have rebuilt brick by brick. Underway in the second half, corner three. Right there, a good set to start the second half for ULM. And started with the ability to get the ball inside to the post to Mika. Tyreek LaCour hits the three. Preseason second team all Sun Belt. 14 points per game. Last year a steal in midcourt and then a traveling call against Jalen Bolden. Shed Sharp Pryor. Francis and Roberts. Same starting five for Houston as the first half. Reach foul there on Savion Gallion. And that was a bump knocking LJ Cryer off of his straight line. That's a point of emphasis. If the offensive player is running on a straight line, the defensive player cannot knock him off of that line. Cryer under the basket for Francis for the layup. Yeah, nice job, Javier Francis, keeping his balance. For more on Coach Reece Sharp, let's go down to our courtside reporter, Abby Christofferson. Yeah, Coach said, he told his team, don't get frustrated. The Cougars are an elite team. It's a struggle on offense for them. You have to acknowledge how good that the Cougars are defensively. He said that they haven't played too bad defensively, though. They got a few threes, but, you know, they're still struggling because he said, we are playing the Cougars. They're not good. They're great. So he told them to keep their heads up. Work hard and just enjoy this first half of the season. Thank you, Abby. A deep two there. Missed by Jalen Bolden. Shed kicks out for Emmanuel Sharp. Yeah, Tyreek LaCour got completely turned around by Jamal Shedd. He turned his back and spun around, had no idea where he is, forced the entire team to collapse. An easy shot for Emmanuel Sharp. Roberts does well, keeping his man in front of him, then a reach-in foul. Interesting. Emmanuel Sharp, a little banged up. I think he knocked knees, but it's interesting because just then Juwan Roberts was guarding Nika. Nika was on the drive and was lowering his shoulder and Juwan Roberts looked at the official like, you've got to call that. And my response would be, no, you have to force the official to call that. Step over in front of him, take a shoulder to the middle of your chest and go down. The rules haven't changed on drawing a charge for anybody other than an airborne player. Jamal Shedd's airborne for a layup. Uh, he got a steal. Watch this on the inbounds play. A careless inbounds play. And then he thinks he got fouled. So did Kelvin Sampson. Look at him come right back in. And Oh, yeah. He sure did. A missed call there as Shedd was fouled. Mika hands off. Gallien for ULM. Jump stop and a foul. Ooh, something underneath the basket after the fact. 
Well, that was a good set by Louisiana Monroe. They had LaCour came off of three screens. It was a triple stagger. He came down the middle of the floor and then called around two. And that was clearly a called play to get him a shot. And man, he came down and landed on his tailbone. Damian Dunn flying for the rebound. Held in it. Sampson, an earful there for Marcus Pettigrew, the crew chief. Pettigrew's been around the block. He just kind of smiled yeah. after what he heard from Coach Sampson. I was on a conference call with Chris Rastatter, the new head of uh, uh, officials, and I very much appreciated kind of his demeanor, seeing much more business-like, and we're going to call games, and he's consistently encouraging his guys that after they put a whistle on a call, don't go over and be confrontational. Stay away from the coaches. And that was a good example of it right there. Nice pass by Jamal Shedd. A dunk there for Javier Francis. Shedd knocked it away. It's Jawan Roberts to throw it down. Heads up play by Jamal Shedd. He, he set a running screen and he put his arms up in there like I'm not doing anything wrong and kept the defensive player on his back and allowed Juwan Roberts a free run to the rim. Nika. Shot clock violation. Javier Francis is running the floor extremely well. Nice find by Jamal Shedd. And then look at look at Jamal Shedd. You see him running in front of LaCour, and he put his arms up in the air like everything's good here. U of A's being efficient on the offensive end. 12 assists right now for 16 made field goals. Jamal Shedd already with five assists in this game. Cryer was fouled. I didn't appreciate how thick L.J. Cryer is. I mean, you look at this kid's legs, and he looks like a tailback. I mean, he is a strong kid, and he's got such good balance. He gets low to the ground and allows him to do that step back that we got so accustomed to seeing from Marcus Sasser. Well, rave reviews about L.J. Cryer's commitment to the conditioning program from the entire staff since transferring from Baylor. Here's Cryer missing the three. Dunn slapped the rebound to Tugler. Cryer missed another three. Foul in the backcourt on Malik Wilson. Jojo Tugler needs to get involved here in the second half. He got two quick fouls and didn't play very much in the first half. And Kelvin Sampson's upset about something. He's over there giving Blanca Burns a earful. Tyreek LaCour. Nika Metsarishvili, native of the country of Georgia, went to Ranger Community College. Here's his first attempt at three tonight. He missed it. Backside rebound. Malik Wilson grabs the board. Seventeen first half points for Damian Dunn. Dunn draws a contact. Rebound involved. I got my money on this young man. He is a high energy player. Had a good conversation with Kellen Sampson at Shooter on about JoJo Tugler's development, and he just said. Jojo's played a lot of basketball, not necessarily just the games, the organized basketball, but in the front court, playing to 21. Family hoops for the Tugglers, and a bucket there for Jawan Roberts. Jojo Tugler reminds me of Damari Carroll from Missouri. He was a stud in the Big 12. I, I don't know how many years he played in the NBA, but man, body type and energy and skill set and Boy, I look at JoJo Tugler and I see a young Damari Carroll.
Now Carroll led Mizzou to the Elite Eight that year. And he had a nice NBA career, 10 plus years, multiple teams, ended here in Houston with the Rockets just a couple years ago. Kellen talked about the comparison of JoJo Tugler with Jarris Walker and their learning curve last season to this. Five to shoot here for Nika. This is for Nika. Offensive rebound Dijou, and he lost it to Malik Wilson, he said. As they... Tugler back for Wilson. Done, this is the three. The Walker is probably better on the perimeter, guarding guards with his footwork. Tugler's a bit tougher inside, but they're both very physically gifted. Yeah, interesting comparison. That's a really good question, because I would have thought that athletically, Jarris Walker would just look like such a specimen, and yet it's JoJo Tugler that's probably more aggressive and more athletic. Three-pointer, Sabian Gallion, the senior from Washington, D.C. Two years at Buffalo, South Plains College as well before UL Monroe for Gallion. Arsenault clears space. Dunn got the offensive board, he'll go to the line. Uh, just so many things that Damian Dunn does well on the basketball court. He got that rebound, and when the shot went up, he was outside the three-point line up at the top, and he came crashing down to end up with that offensive rebound. It all started with really good defense and pressure on the ball. A little handshake there, good there from Savion Gallia. They had a few words for Brooke Wells, one of the referees. Wells fired right back at him. He went to talk to the coach, and then I think a learning experience for Gallia shaking the referee's hand. Damian Dunn may be getting a little bit tired, missed two free throws. LaCour for Nika. An excellent rotation. Tugler knocked it away. Picked up by Arsenal. Shed run in the fast break. Gorgeous from Jamal Shed for Arsenal. Goals and they have 13 offensive rebounds. And then offensively, they've been very efficient. 13 assists on 18 made field goals. 53-22, 13 minutes left, second half of the season opener. Wild three-pointer. Yeah, great box out by Jamal Shedd. He's down there with a six-foot-nine-inch player on his back. He got down low. He put his butt right on his thigh and just backed him out off the floor. That's Makai Willis, six foot nine inch junior out of Tallahassee, Florida. If you're Keith Richard, I think mixed emotions tonight. They've limited Houston to 53 points. On many nights, Houston might be on pace for 100, but the offense has been dreadful with only 22. Yeah, it's just so hard running the offense. Right now they've got 19 turnovers, and we still have 12 minutes to go in this game. Tyreek LaCour running the offense. Only returning starter from last year's team. Knocked away by Tugler. They just cannot get the ball to the post. Houston ball. Sharp contesting the loose ball there against Tyrese Watson. Houston currently has Arsenal, Shed, Tugler, Pryor, and Sharp. It's another four-guard lineup. We'll talk about that a lot. Seemingly this season. Good option for Elvin Sampson and his staff. Arsenal straight away three. And maybe four guards and a small forward. With JoJo Tugler manning the post. Just excellent rotation. The, the, the rotation on the backside is just could not be better right now defensively for the Cougars. Bounce pass inside. 
earned. He suffered another ACL tear. Yeah, back-to-back -back tears. So unfortunate. But like I said, this guy is a fighter. He's back now. You can see him wearing his knee brace. Uh, Coach is really proud of him, though, for how he's come back and how, how excited he is to have him playing again. So it's really great to see him on the court tonight, Matt. That's just brutal, Abby. I mean, he does the entire rehab, and then three days back, tears the same ACL. Man, that is a lonely recovery path he was on. Time at UAB and Odessa College before ULM. He's only been cleared for three weeks this season as Sharp misses the three. The offensive rebound, man, Dunn just has that engine and that extra gear. He goes down here. And he has brought that tenacity and grip in his Houston debut. Yeah, he's just, he does such a good job of crashing the offensive boards. I mean, he's done a lot of good things. But look where he comes from. Look to the left of your screen. He's completely outside of the picture. And then he's inside everybody. And I didn't see if a foul was called. But, boy, he took a shot right across the nose. If you're going to nitpick last year's team, one weakness would be not able to get to the free throw line enough. I think Damian Dunn. I'd agree with that. Excels at getting to the free yeah. throw line. Yeah, Kelvin Sampson's got to be very pleased with. It. I talked about it last year. You know who he reminds me of? He reminds me of Villanova guards. You know, the way they get to the paint and they lift you up and then they lean into you or they step back and just so hard to defend without putting on the free throw line. Having a tough time shooting it from the line tonight, uncharacteristically. He's four for eight from the strike. Maybe more free throws missed tonight than he did all of last season. Four fouls now on Kai Willis, the junior transfer from Fairfield University. For the Warhawks, two players have seven points. Sadian Gallian and Tyreek Latour. No Latour. Nobody else with more than two points in this game. Straight away three off the back iron. Tudler pulls it under and he zips it past the shed. Just kind of the motor he has. <laughs> Threw a fastball from two feet. One speed for Tudler. They're sharp in the paint. This might be a new part of Emmanuel Sharp's game, Bree. We saw him last year as a freshman, more of a three-point shooter. We've seen him get to the paint a few times tonight. Has really good basketball instincts. He, he's done a nice job of reading the defense. When the closeout is off balance, Emmanuel Sharp has not hesitated to put his head down and get to the rim. Emmanuel Sharp back to the line. Went to Bishop McLaughlin School. Where he played for his dad, father. Where he played for his dad, Derek. Excellent basketball family. Mom in the Canada Basketball Hall of Fame. John, a basketball player, had a great pro career in Israel. You can tell he grew up around basketball. He, he plays with a very high IQ. Does a nice job of reading the floor. Boy, a player from ULM just went straight over there. Emmanuel Sharp had the ball, and Kelton Williams just went running right onto the floor and they're going to call a technical for that and that's the right call but I guess just excited. Young man, get in the game. I'm in, coach. <laughs> no, you got to go over to the table. You got to wait for the officials to call you in and a little bit of a smile from Keith Richard. It's like, come on. Let him in the game for crying out loud. It's going to be the college debut for the freshman from Elothian, Texas, Kelton Williams. So, hey, excited. First time ever no, coming in to play college hoops, does it inside for Tita Center. The time I checked in the game, I ripped off my sweatpants and had to look down to make sure I had my gym shorts on. I was so excited. Here is the college debut from Kelton Williams. 6-1 guard from Elothia. I don't know about that. You know, going over the back 
does not necessarily mean you're on the back. And I'm telling you, Javier Francis went straight up, no body contact, and just reached over the top and grabbed that offensive rebound. Watch this, watch. There's no push down low. He just goes straight up and outreaches the ball. I, I don't know about that one. Offensive foul, a push off there for Makai Willis. First offensive foul of the season that we've seen. Again, the rule change for Kelvin Sampson and all the coaches, what they have to adapt to is that the rule has only changed for airborne players. Has not changed anywhere else on the floor. It's now five fouls for Makai Willis. A transfer from Fairfield University fouls out with 10 and a half minutes remaining. Inside for Francis, he's fouled. Yeah, the rule, the rule change that we keep talking about is for an airborne player. So it's rotating over somebody from the weak side, a secondary defender. You have to be in legal guarding position by the time the offensive player plants his foot before he leaves the ground. Last year, you had to be there before he left his plant foot, left the floor to become airborne. This year, you have to be set before the plant foot hits the ground. And again, that's secondary defender for an airborne player. What that means is not going to be many charges. I, I think out of 100 examples that the rules committee looked at, 97 of them under the new rule would result in a block call. And from the officials, layman terms is that you just have to get there really, 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 really early. Really early. And the flip side of that is that the rules still the same, and that was a good example. Javier Francis was trying to play defense as a secondary defender with his body inside the restricted arc. And what all of the guys have to learn is what the big guys already know, is that if you're a secondary defender and a guy's penetrating, you've got to wall up and leave your feet. You still contest the play, but you've got to do it in the air and straight up and down in order to not be called for a block. Allen makes the free throw. Dunn goes to the bench. One of two for Gallia. Shed Roberts Sharp, LJ Cryer, and Javier Francis on the floor for Houston. There's a three from Emmanuel Sharp. 20 points for Sharp tonight. He does not need much room or space to get his shot off. Sharp contests. Back to LaCour. Block from Francis. Yeah, that was perfect. Uh, you saw Javier Francis come over. He was inside the restricted arc, and he went straight up and blocked that shot. Great defense from Francis. A layup from Cryer. Yeah, we just talked about Javier Francis did not get her coming off that tour to Australia. And to go on the international, you can go one out of every four years. You get 10 practices early on to get ready for those tours. An extra run up to the season. And as Kelvin Sampson told Abby Christofferson at halftime normally, no games till after Thanksgiving, more practices. Now there's more games, fewer practices. A miss from Nika. Crowder hits a three. That's now eight assists for Jamal Shedd. Cougars are blowing open what was already a big lead on a 16 to one run. Make that 18 to one run. A flurry of points for Crowder. That's seven in the last couple of minutes. That three, by the way, was his first make from beyond the arc after he missed his first six.
<laughs> well, I, you know, I looked at you and I tried not to laugh, but Jerry Nagopo just got the ball bounced off his forehead by his teammate. <laughs> <laughs> Murphy's Law on the offensive end tonight uh, for the ULM Warhawks. Ramon Walker Jr. hits a three. Uh, Juwan Roberts is down. He, uh, he looks like he's okay. First point tonight for Walker. On the other end, it's Jerry Nagopo, sophomore from Central African Republic. He was on that St. Peter's team that shocked Kentucky in the first round, became the Cinderella reached. The Elite Eight three years ago, he was a red shirt. And I thought, does he really have 20 points? And uh, it's nice when you sit down and you're playing as well as Emmanuel Sharp and Damian Dunn are. Suffered a gruesome leg injury as a senior in high school, early enrollee at the semester break at Houston. He's been around the program a while now in his second season. Cryer misses the three. Marcino tapped the rebound off the glass. Ramon Walker Jr. grabs the loose ball. Shed no look pass for Arsenault. And it's Walker attacking the glass for another offensive board. An adjustment coming out of that timeout by Keith Richard. They went to a one, they went to a one-three-one. I'm not sure whether it was a half-court trap or not. The trap never quite got there, but this is about the fourth or fifth time we've seen either Emmanuel Sharp or Damian Dunn start outside the three-point line and end up getting the offensive rebound. That's Ramon Walker. I'm sorry. A deep guard group, Ramon Walker Jr., the key contributor two years ago to the Elite Eight team in his freshman season. So now, fit, down the, sorry, 15 offensive rebounds. Walker grew up down the road in parallel with the Shadow Creek High School. Remember that freshman season, they went to the Elite Eight. He played through that gruesome hand injury, wearing protective wrap most of that year. The ULM ball is Malik Wilson returns for Jamal Shedd. Louisiana Monroe with six assists and 22 turnovers. Jamal Shedd has had himself a basketball game. Nine assists, just three turnovers, and four steals for the senior leader for the Cougars. 4 1 3 1 for the Warhawks. It's LJ Cryer. Time you're going against a 1 3 1, you want to split the guy up top and split the guy down at the bottom and make diagonal passes. Arsenal missed the three. Tugler grabs the offensive board. Cryer off the mark. Ramon Walker Jr., good pursuit. And a layup inside. Jerry Agopo, a sophomore. Transfer from St. Peter's. And characteristically, LJ Carr has really struggled behind the three point line in this first game. The ULM after tonight at Central Michigan in five days, hosting Louisiana Tech and Ecclesia in mid November. Malik Wilson. Sophomore for Monroe running the offense here for ULM. Tugler grabs the miss from Kelton Williams. Williams in the game for his college debut, misses his first shot. Aaron Walker Jr. exploding to the rim. Good pass for Arsenault. And that's about the third or fourth time we've seen the Cougar drive down the sideline baseline. And the offside guard does not stay out there spotted up, but he dives to the basket. And you know, really well done and good execution. Jacob Wilson 
Foul by Ramon Walker Jr. Brian Elvin time. Senior from Round Rock at a Cedar Ridge High School. A nice basketball game by Emmanuel Sharp. Wilson misses the first free throw. Arsenal, Wilson, Walker, Elvin, and Tugler. It's a young team out there on the court for the Cougars with four and a half minutes left. Oh, Jab step, Arsenal, he gets to the rim, missed the dunk, and he was fouled. Boy, that was a beautiful jab step by Terrence Arsenal. Got the ball over here on the left wing, jabbed with his right foot, got Mika off balance and just exploded by him. Okay, I got I got hassled last game. I was talking about Terrence Arsenault being out of Beaumont and uh, expanded the geographic region of the greater Houston area to include Beaumont. And had a couple of friends I went to school with just ripped me apart. <laughs> the only human being in the world who calls the Golden Triangle part of the greater Houston area. So I'll retract that comment, and I am well aware of the Golden Triangle and where it is. It's about 90 miles east. Yeah, my college roommate was a star basketball player at Nederland High School, and his dad was the coach there, Jamie Weaving. Deep in the heart of the Golden Triangle. Port Arthur. And a proud basketball heritage there in Arsenal. At Beaumont United High School, four-star recruit, won back-to-back five A-state titles, was the tournament MVP. They beat Mansfield Timberview in the finals this senior year. Elvin step back three. Malik Wilson. One-hand put back there from Tugler. And there is a bucket for Nika. Quiet night for him. He's rounding back in form. That's his first field goal. Yeah, Jerry Nagopo did a nice job navigating that double team. Did a reverse pivot and turned and created space and handled the pressure very well. Getting back to full fitness. Had surgery after five games last year. Tugler off the window. His first points. He had foul trouble in the first half. Coach Sampson said he'll be a better offensive player by January. It's going to take him a few months. And there is the rejection off the window from Tugler. So Wilson, a hard foul. And then off to Charleston. Towson, and then either Wake Forest or Utah in a third game. So what has made it so tough for ULM tonight? Take us into the Houston defense. How it's been so hard for ULM just to run a basic offense. Well, coming into the game, Keith Richard was talking about their size and our size. And he talks about, I got these four big guys, and I got these big guys, and these big guys. And they have been a complete non-factor in this game. ULM has not been able to get the ball into the post consistently, if at all. And when they did, it usually ended up in a turnover. And so... Uh, uh, for a team that's trying to run their offense from inside out, if you can't make a post-entry pass, it's going to be a long night, and that's what it has been here for the Louisiana Monroe Warhawks. Now you see him posting up here, Nika. He's on the ball, and he has it stripped away by Arsenault. Uh, he tried to muscle Arsenault, lower his shoulder, and Terrence Arsenault just ripped the ball out of his hands. Terrence Arsenault's post defense has been excellent tonight. Straight away three for Elvin.
Walker grabs the rebound. Step back, Elvin. Nice steal from Terrence Arsenal. Wilson pushed into the uh, photographers. Yeah, Ryan Elvin with the beautiful release. And does a nice job of creating some separation, but a quick trigger on that shot. And I think his teammates are enjoying his shoot. Emmanuel Sharp really enjoyed it. Uh, the students love him. He's a senior. He's been around the campus a long time. Future coach. His father passed away a couple years ago. He wrote about that. GoCoops.com a couple years ago. What his dad meant to him. What a great community member was. Buying lunches and providing meals for so many in the Round Rock community where he grew up. Yeah, that is now 24 turnovers for the Warhawks. Ramon Walker Jr. for Houston. Wilson off the front iron. a lot of contact down there. Cedric Lott and Jerry Degopo are really going after each other. Cedric Lott, his first minutes tonight. Redshirt freshman center joined at the semester break last year, born in Amazon Ivory Coast. Well-traveled. He moved with his family from Ivory Coast to Canada, spent a year before Henderson, Nevada, and then San Diego, where he went to Balboa School for high school. I appreciate the competitiveness of Nagopo, but doing a lot of talking for a team that's down 50 points. A good start to the 23-24 season for Houston.